Today I'm going to show you how staying down is one of the most common myths in the tennis industry and how the opposite is true if you want to develop lots of effortless power on your forehand. How often have you heard coaches and instructors tell you to stay down as you hit the ball on the forehand and also on the backhand? This is one of the most common myths. This is something that you don't see when you look at the best players in the world play, especially if you look at the best forehands in the world. What you see is the opposite. But let's first just talk about the staying down principle. What they essentially want you to do is stay low as you hit the ball. But why is this such a problem? The problem with staying low as you hit, you've eliminated your whole kinetic chain. All you have left now is the power that's generated from your arm if you stay low. And that's not very good, it's not optimized. Now before we get into the rest of the video, let's just take a look at some great forehands. And I just want you to watch some clips of some good forehands and see if you see any commonalities amongst them all. After looking at those forehands, what did you see? The main principle you will see on all the best forehands is how they use their kinetic chain. Using the kinetic chain is very important if you want to develop a lot of effortless power on your forehand. And that's why it goes against the myth of staying down as you hit the ball. Now, first question, what is the kinetic chain and what is it used for? The kinetic chain is, to put it in simple terms, it's all about using your body effectively to transfer energy through each link in the kinetic chain so you can get more racket head speed and more power. Now with the kinetic chain there's several links. The links go up from the feet to the knee to the hip into the shoulder, elbow, wrist and then into your racket. So you have several links. Now the goal of the kinetic chain is to place the end segment which is the hand and racket you want to place the end segment at the maximum velocity at the right time so you can get that racket head speed and power on your strokes. And the way you do that, you have to coil and uncoil the body so you can transfer all the energy up through each link, giving you more racket head speed and more power. So to use the kinetic chain, we have to coil and uncoil the body. But how do we do that in the most simple and effective manner? For me, I always split this up into two components. The first component of using the body effectively is what we call a good unit turn. Now the unit turn is essentially the preparation phase. And this is where many players go wrong. In the preparation phase, many players are too independent with the arm, the hit and arm. So they activate their hit and arm independently to their body. And now the arm and the body are out of sync. They're not in sync anymore. So what you want to do instead, you want to copy the best players in the world. And what you want to do is turn the shoulders away from the target. And when I'm turning my shoulders away from the target, if you look from the side angle, you can now see my shoulders are pointed into what would be the right side fence for a right-handed player. My non-dominant arm is parallel with the baseline. But also the next key, I've turned my shoulders now past the level of my hips. So now what am I doing? I'm now starting to coil the upper body against my lower body. And I'm starting to store energy down the side of my body now. This storing energy is important because when that stored energy is released, there's the racket head speed. Now we've completed the first part of using the body, which is a good unit turn. Now it goes into the second part, which is all about how you use your lower body. Now the lower body is very simple. You're gonna complete your turn. So now I've turned the shoulders past the level of my hips. I'm now gonna step forward into the neutral stance. The same applies for all the other stances, but for now I'll just show you the neutral stance. From here, my racket and hand are gonna to begin to go down into the slot position. When the racket and hand go down into the slot position, I need to get low with my lower body. I gotta push against the ground. Remember, the ground is at your disposal, use it. So really use that ground force, push against the ground, and then as the racket and hand begin to go forward to contact, I'm gonna stand back up, and I'm gonna transfer the weight forward and upward into my strike. Take a look one more time from the back angle. 
So I complete my turn, I step forward, neutral stance. Now I coil the lower body, I sit down in that chair, and then I stand up as I hit. And you can actually say that out loud as you're hitting. You sit down and stand up. Now the final piece of information which will clearly show you how the kinetic chain is transferring all of the energy into the racket is how the players, the pro players, when they reach contact, their whole body stops rotating. So up to contact, their body is uncoiling and the body is rotating into contact. But as soon as they strike the ball, everything stops rotating. And what does that tell you? That tells you that all of the energy has been transferred into the racket. Now, I know some of you may be saying, but James, you do see sometimes the pro players stay low as they hit the ball. And yes, there will be scenarios on the tennis court where they have to stay low. But those scenarios will be when they're either hitting on the dead run, so they're on a very defensive situation, and they can't really use their body, so all they have left is the power coming from the arm and the racket. But again, that's not happening on more of their neutral rally ball. If they have time to set up and get in position, they're going to use their body more effectively. Now there's a few simple ways you can work on using the body more effectively. I'll show you a couple real quick. First one is you can use something like this, a bucket, or you can use a chair. And just within the shadow swing, you start in your neutral isolated position. So I've already completed my unit turn. I'm in the neutral stance. And what I'm gonna do, as I go down with the racket head, I'm gonna go down and sit down on the bucket and then stand back up as I hit. Now, this is an imperfect drill. It's a very exaggerated progression. But in order to fix any problems you have, you have to exaggerate in the other direction in order to get the new technique working. So just do a couple here where you go down, you sit down, stand up. Sit down, stand up. And then what you can do, you can take the bucket away, grab a few balls, and just work within the cell feet. I'm gonna start in the isolated position. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna complete my unit turn, move my non-dominant arm, my toss arm, back into the court at approximately a 45 degree angle. So I'm contacting the ball out in front, and I'm just gonna do a couple where I go down and stand up. Show you again. Down, up. Do a couple more here. Down, up. And last one. Down, up, and hold. And there you can do it in the cell feed. From there, you can increase the difficulty of the progressions, go in hand feed, basket feed, and then into a light ball rally. So that's it for today's video. And I just wanted to make this video because I see this instruction going around on the internet about staying down. And I think it can be very detrimental for a lot of club players who wanna get more effortless power on their strokes. And just ask yourself the question, don't take my advice. Ask yourself the question after watching this video, what forehand will be more effective? A forehand where you just stay down and just use the arm as you hit the ball, or a forehand where you engage all the body segments so you can transfer all the energy up into the racket head, giving you more racket head speed and more power. Which one will be more effective and which one will give you more results? Just ask yourself that question. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. Also, give us a like and a thumbs up. And if you do enjoy it, you can also subscribe to our channel more videos like this in the future.